The Groucho Show, brought to you by the Tony Company. Greatest name in home beauty, Tony, world leader in hair research. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Contrary to what you may think, this is not an old movie. It's You Bet Your Life. And each of our couples has a chance to make up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. This is the word right here. Bye-bye, Ducky. Groucho, we have a couple of young people who'd like to talk to you. They they're have getting pretty old by this time. <laughs> <laughs> they're Veronica Reed and Bill Brewer, and they're strangers to each other, and neither one of them is married. So folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to the Groucho Show. <laughs> Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. Now, your name is Veronica Reed. That's right. And the Bill Brewer, huh? Yes, sir. Veronica seems pretty formal. What, what shall I call you, Veronica? Well, my friends call me Ronnie Groucho. Ronnie Groucho? <laughs> a strange name, Ronnie Groucho. <laughs> now, where were you born, Ronnie? Upstairs in the front room, I'll bet. <laughs> I was born in Stockholm, Sweden. You're a Svenska? Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't look it. You look like a Spaniard. <laughs> Why did you leave Sweden to come to America? Did you have a sweetheart over here? No, well, actually, I left Australia to come to America. Well, why did you come to Hollywood? Well, I was very fortunate. I won a competition in Australia, Miss Australia. Uh, and I won a trip around the world. What kind of competition? Baseball or uh, bowling? <laughs> it was a beauty competition. Oh, beauty. Miss Australia TV. Oh. Mm -hmm. Australia TV, they have Australia, they have TV there? Oh, yes, my uh, word. Bill, you're not married, huh? No, I'm not. And, and Ronnie's not married either. No, Groucho. If you ever decide to get married, Ronnie, uh, what kind of a man uh, are you looking for? Well, Groucho, the most important thing, I think, in a man is the... Is superior... a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> a superior interior. Give me that again. I like a man with a superior interior. A superior interior. Yeah. Say, that's me. <laughs> I, have an, I have an inferior exterior, but my interior, <laughs> my interior is truly superior. <laughs> I just had the whole thing done over. <laughs> Two weeks ago. I even had my tire switch. <laughs> I did. I had a fellow at the garage take a whip and hit my tires for about 20 minutes. But that was the first time they'd been switched this season. <laughs> Now, what is a superior interior? Well, you mean every head should have a silver lining? Um, what do you I mean by a superior interior? I would say it's, um, what's upstairs that counts. Uh -huh. What's upstairs? Well, I have something upstairs. My upstairs made. <laughs> that, that's not easy because I only have a one-story house. <laughs> and the one story you're not going to hear is about my upstairs maid. <laughs> Your name is, uh, your name isn't Ronnie. I, well, I kept calling you Ronnie. Mine's Bill. Have you got a job, Bill? Yes, I do. I'm a cartoonist. Cartoonist? Yes, I am. Well, uh, where have your cartoons uh, appeared? Well, they uh, appeared in a number of magazines and uh, for the box greeting card company. And now I'm working on a comic strip titled Clyde. And uh, that's with the Times Mirror Syndicate. And if you want to see a comic strip, you should see me in a shower. <laughs> I think you've inspired a couple of mine. Really? Yes, I do. You're a cartoonist? Yes. At a greeting card company? Yes, I am. What do they need you for? Well, I create uh, drawings and uh, gags for the greeting cards. We're doing contemporary humor. I've seen some of those humorous greeting mm -hmm. cards. I remember when you paid a nickel for a Mother's Day card, and uh, that was, you know, it was sweet and sentimental. And now that they charge you a dollar for one, and it usually goes something like, uh, Mother dear, you're young and frisky. Please don't drink up all the whiskey. <laughs> this is considered a very sentimental card today. Isn't that true? Isn't that contemporary humor? Well, we've got one a little softer than that. It's happy anniversary, darling. Uh, after all these years, your love is still aflame. And on the inside, the card reads, just shows what you can do with a good match. <laughs> What do, you, what do you call a card like that? 
Contemporary humor. Uh, now, how'd you happen to get into this kind of cartooning? Well, I won a contest uh, for college cartoonists. Uh, Where was this? Well, I was here in Los Angeles, and uh, I saw a poster on the wall at art school where I was attending here, and I entered it, and uh, hundreds entered it, and I won it. Uh, what was the card that won the, the uh, card the that award? Won, well, he was a very short, stumpy little character with a key in his back, and the caption was, hope you're not too run down. Uh, well, I don't know, would you mind explaining that? This could be for a get well card. If uh, you were, if someone was ailing and uh, you needed a get well card. Uh, and they get this card? They get this card with a key in the little fella's back and the caption says, hope you're not too run down. <laughs> if I'm run down and I'm in a hospital, I want a card from the Blue Cross saying, you don't have to pay this week. <laughs> charming youngsters and I think you're gonna make an ideal couple. Well, let's give you both a chance to win some money. Thank you very much. Yes. Mr. Fenneman, would you bring out the questions? Have you met Mr. Fenneman? No, we haven't. How do you, How do, you do? do? This nice is Mr. Fenneman. This is Mrs. Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Bill Brewer. And if you're in a hospital, he'll send you a card <laughs> that'll kill you. <laughs> Here's your run <rundown. laughs> Explain the game. Now, what, what category did you choose? Uh, movie quiz, right? Yes. Sir. Movie quiz. Do you, you understand you? the game? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Start with two. All right. You, you go first. And, and you hand it to me. There. Who is the lovely young girl who plays the title role in The World of Susie Wong? Nancy Kwan. Nancy Kwan is right. So you've got $200. And three more chances to make a total of five. Proceed with caution. You're going for the harder questions. <laughs> this is a 300 one. A 300. Who directed the Clark Gable, Marilyn Monroe picture, The Misfits? You John talk Newton. it over, you know. John Huston, wasn't it? Uh, the director, no? John Huston. John Huston is right. I was afraid he was going to talk you out of it. $200. Yeah. Who plays the feminine lead in Butterfield 8? Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor is right. You now have $700. This one is worth $300. Oh. For $300, who played the part of Miss Sala in Ben-Hur? Ben-Hur. Can you see that? I didn't see it either. Sugar. Oh. Read it out loud. Oh, Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd in the hand is why two in the bush. <laughs> well, you uh, did wind up with uh, $700. $700. Yes. So, you so you get a chance, to, you get come a chance to come back later, later to win that. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Very nice. So we'll see you later. So and I also want each of you to have a gift box of Tony Company products. Now, you what? two behave yourself yeah. back there, huh? Thanks very much. Because I'm busy out here. I can't You know, this season, fashion designers have some brand new ideas about hemlines. And Tony has some brand new ideas about fashions, too. Watch this. Groucho, Marika Abba, and Charles... And a Happy New Year, isn't it? <laughs> Groucho, Marika Abba, and Charles Kephart are waiting to talk to you. So folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Yes. Welcome to the Groucho Show. Say the secret word and... <laughs> Is this your uh, sister? Well, <laughs> this is the book my brother Harpo wrote. It's called Harpo Speaks. It's all about life and show business. Very good book, too. And Groucho, um, maybe we ought to try and bring the real uh, Charles Kephart out now, shall we? Oh, well. uh, Mr. Kephart, would you come out, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Yes, sir. Mr. Kephart, I'm, I'm delighted to uh, make your acquaintance. Let <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Come on.
<laughs> I didn't see how he's going to make any money on that book if he keeps giving them away. Now, uh, let's see now. Marika Arba. Yes. That's, that's you, huh? I think so. And your name is Charles uh, Kephart? That's a very unusual name. What kind of a name is uh, Marika Arba? It's Hungarian. Hungarish? Mm -hmm. You are Hungarish, huh? Sure. Were you born behind the Iron Curtain? I was born in Budapest. Uh, is, that, is that still your home? No, I, uh, since I moved to Sherman Oaks in San Fernando Valley. Oh. I'm living here. You're still behind the Iron Curtain. Huh? <laughs> now, do you have some special reason for uh, coming to America, Marika? Well, I, I think so. I, I did. Um, I, was in, I was a prima ballerina in Italy, and uh, uh, Quo Vadis was then, uh, they were looking for a dancer. Who was? Quo Vadis. Quo Vadis? Quo Vadis was a picture, you oh. know. And after I finished Quo Vadis, they brought me here to oh. do other pictures. Are, are you still in the movies? No, I'm not. I got married and uh, settled down. Uh, how, did, how did you meet him? Uh, I <clears> ran <throat> out of gasoline. You ran out of gasoline? Mm -hmm. And that's how you got married? That's right. Mm -hmm. I was driving home in Beverly Hills several you years You were living ago. in Beverly Hills then? My mother was, and I was uh, uh, driving... You were living with your mother? Yes, I was. Uh -huh. Well, did your mother have her own car? Did she run out of gas, too? No, she, she unfortunately <laughs> didn't run out of gas. She oh. didn't get married oh. <laughs> lately. Oh. <laughs> well, you had me worried for a minute there. I was driving home, and I suddenly uh, realized I can't uh, drive ahead, and since I'm terribly unmechanical, I didn't know what happened. So there was a gentleman in your car? Not in my car. Coming with another lady, with another car, and uh, he offered to bring some gas to fill up my tank. I said, how much do I owe you? And he says, oh, why don't we discuss this over the phone? Uh, could you give me your phone number? So uh, I said, I never give strange men my phone number. Request you 10799. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, then... You were the shy type, huh? <laughs> No, I had good eyes. Uh -huh. Didn't you distrust him after the sneaky thing he did uh, with, to the other girl? Well, did, I don't didn't you ever feel that he would probably do the same thing to you? No, because uh, Hungarians are different. Yes, they are. This... <laughs> yeah, what's the old line? If you have a Hungarian <laughs> for a friend, you don't need any enemies. <laughs> They're very nice Hungarians huh? around. People. Yes, they're wonderful people. They're stimulating and they're charming and they're bright. Don't you trust me? They, they say, uh, well, I have this pretty obvious what I just heard about your tank before. <laughs> they say the only thing more uh, <clears throat> untrustworthy than a Hungarian is a Romanian. That's my mother-in-law. Oh. <laughs> That'd be a nice family to get mixed up with. Huh? <laughs> If there are any Hungarians <coughs> or Romanians listening to the show tonight, of course you realize I'm only kidding. Now, where are you from, uh, Mr. Kephart? Altoona, Pennsylvania, Mr. Marks. Have you got a job? Uh, oh, yes, sir. I got a fine job. I'm employed as a photo engraver uh, here in Los Angeles or the Herald Express. Do you have any hobbies to keep you busy when you're away from the paper? Oh, yeah. I have, uh, have three very lovely hobbies. Uh, how old are they? <laughs> um, the hobbies uh, I do, I make home brew, home brew beer, and uh, I smoke fish in the backyard, and we make ice cream in a bathtub. You smoke fish in the backyard? Huh? Aren't you allowed to smoke them in the house? You say you make your own home brew, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you, if the news has gotten around to you yet, Charlie, but you know you can buy beer legally now. <laughs> Well, I got uh, kind of stuck with this with my own big mouth. You see, my wife asked me what would I uh, like to have for Christmas, so uh, I got to be the wise guy. I give her a wise answer. I say I'd like to have a home brew making outfit. Mm -hmm. so, well, how uh, did you arrive at that? Uh... Well, that was uh, the squareliest thing I could think of offhand. Uh -huh. Well, did you always dream of, of being a kind of an amateur bootlegger? <laughs> no, I remember making a home brew with my father when we were kids back in Altoona. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, I thought I'd always like to try it again and see if I could duplicate, duplicate the uh, quality of my father's product. I uh -huh. haven't attained it yet. 
But uh, well, this one the Stan Brew outfit. Were you too. were you a je were you jealous of his uh, beer making uh, talents? He had a pretty good reputation. <laughs> you mean just in your cellar? <laughs> Now, how much do you make at a time of this? Well, it's a 12-gallon crack. We make 12 gallons at a crack. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I didn't get that. <laughs> you have a 10, 12-gallon uh, uh, crack, and you make a... Crock. A cro and you make it uh -huh. in a 12-gallon crock. 12 gallons in the crock at a crack. <laughs> I was wondering how you could make it in a crack and then not be crocked. <laughs> Well, is, is this stuff safe to drink? Well, it's a pretty high octane uh, product. <laughs> Could you use it in a tank? Well, I'd uh, be happy to uh, lend a couple quarts to try it. But, uh, I don't uh, know what it would do to the gas lines. It's pretty high octane. A couple, got a, uh, has it got a bit very big? Oh kick? boy. Uh, one or two I'm quarts will put an amateur away, but. Uh, a good uh, knockdown, drag out, uh, two fisted type drinker, uh, make his ears turn red and charge his battery and come back for more. Ten <laughs> percent. Charlie, you can buy all those things in the market. Why do you make your own ice cream and smoke your own fish and make your own home brew? Well, I see. I got the. Uh, Are you the afraid wife the atom the, uh, bomb will come and that you want to be? Uh, Independent of any no, outside? I, I never looked at it quite that way, but, you know, that's a thought, you know. Mm. That would make me a big man in the neighborhood. Uh. Yeah. Also, in that cellar, you would be hiding it. <laughs> you wouldn't know whether the bomb fell or not after about six quarts of I that. I wouldn't <laughs> care. That's right. <laughs> now, does your family participate in this yeah, fiendish this, uh, activity? Yeah, this, this is more or less the idea of these games. Uh, this, uh, games, you call them. <laughs> I share the hobby type games. I have the wife and the three children. Patty 17, Annie 15, little Charlie 9, and we got the dog. And they Does all the dog get crocked too? Oh, well, the dog does a very important job, you see, when we're bottling this stuff. And it uh, slops around on the floor, kind of, you know, it overflows the bottom, you know. It's the dog's job to come and lick it up. Well, he must be drunk by 6 o'clock in the evening. Right? Well, he's a he's, uh, runner up to me. You know, I, you hear about togetherness all the time, but you forget that it really exists. So here's a family, here's a man, his wife, three children, and a dog, all crocked by midnight. Right? <laughs> well, enough of this conversation. I'm getting a hangover looking at you. And I'm getting thirsty. What? <laughs> Let's see if you two can win some money. And Mr. Right. Fenneman, would you bring in a bottle of beer in the question? <laughs> Put them up here, sir. <coughs> you explain it. Now, you understand how the game works? You uh, selected famous landmarks as mm -hmm. your category. Uh, four questions to make a total of $500. The hundreds are easy, the twos are in between, and the 300 are pretty tough sometimes. Want to pick Am it? I going to pick it? Pick the What's the category? Uh, famous landmarks. Oh. We start with a two. Okay. <laughs> For two hundred dollars, in what country are the ruins of Stonehenge? Mm. Talk it over. Charlie may still be sober. I have no idea. Stonehenge. H e n g e. H e n d e. S t o n e h e n g e. Stonehenge. Huh? Did you? No, you were close. It's England. Well, you're only three continents away. And three more chances to make $500. Mm. Come on, it's earlier. Here, there. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the fifth inning. The game is still on the basis, you know. For $200, in what city of the world is the famous Prado Museum? Spain. No, Spain. In what city of the world is Madrid? the famous... Huh? Madrid? Madrid is right. You win $200. Oh, I have two more... You have two more chances. I'm sorry. That's all right. For two hundred dollars, in what country is the castle of Chapultepec? <sighs> Chapultepec, C H A P U L T E P E C. In what country is the castle of Chapultepec? No, it's not. I'll let you look at the word. Chapultepec is. If you don't know, guess. Uh, it's Mexico. 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 Mexico is right. 
You Callie. now have four hundred dollars. You're not as big a drinker as you look. <laughs> well, uh, shall we take tea? Or? Uh, uh, one more chance to make five hundred. Uh, the idea is to get five hundred. So why don't you the, take it easy? Okay. And they are easier. Yes. Uh, okay. Here, yes, the same. Yes. There's no guarantee you'll know this, but it's easier than the others. <laughs> For one hundred dollars, in what city would you find the famous Old Bailey? Uh, London, London. London, England. London is right. So now you've won five hundred dollars. You've got to come back and dance later. <laughs> Give Charlie a big kiss for helping you. <laughs> and remember, before you leave, we have a Tony Home Beauty Care kit for each of you. I give you a big kiss. <laughs> we we'll see you later. Oh, kid. All right. Right. <laughs> Groucho, here is uh, Veronica Reed and Bill Brewer, who won $700 in the quiz, all set to try for two, five, or $10,000. You understand the game? Yes, yes, yes. You pick a number for a total of $10,000, and we would put it up here. Three. Three. Put a three. Now, you pick one for $5,000. Two. Two. Now, if any other number but these two comes up, and you get the answer correctly, you win a total of $2,000. Spin the wheel. Well, you weren't even warm. Your numbers were two and three, and it came up seven. So here we go for a total of two and one answer between you. The 19th Amendment, which gives women the right to vote, was the result of untiring efforts of a number of dedicated women. Best known of these was a former school teacher. For a total of $2,000, who was this dedicated woman suffragist? Talk it over. What is it, kids? I'm sorry. Read it out loud. Uh, Susan B. Anthony. Very famous woman, Susan B. Anthony. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wound up with what? Seven hundred dollars. Well, it's not Thank too bad. You so much. It was Better luck next time. Yeah. And I hope you two are happy together. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Gacho, uh, Marika Abba, and Charles uh, Kephart won five hundred dollars, so they're all set to try for two, five, or ten thousand dollars. Wheel them in. You understand the game, ma'am? Huh? Now you pick a number for a total of ten thousand dollars for the night, and we'll put it up here. One number from one to ten. Four. Four. You pick a number for five thousand dollars. Your partner's anyhow, didn't uh, make it. Five. Now if any other number comes up, the question is worth a total of two thousand dollars. Whatever you win is your total for the night, right? Right. Give the wheel a spin. Your numbers were five and four, and it came up two, so you're going for a total of $2,000. All you got to do is get the right answer. And here we are with the question. Are you ready? One answer between you. A young GI cartoonist in World War II created Willie and Joe. Today, this artist is one of America's leading editorial cartoonists. For a total of two grand, what is his name? Okay. No. No. Okay. Wait till the music starts. And then shout it out loud and clear. Okay. Bill Malden? What is the answer? Bill Malden. Bill Malden is absolutely right. You want a total of two thousand? Shows you what a girl can do with an empty tank. <laughs> well, you want a total of two thousand, honey. What are you going to do with your money, Charter? <clears throat> oh, it's a big temptation. I think I will try to go back to, to Budapest. No, I try to get out some child from Hungary. Oh, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. And also put some gas in your car. Huh? <laughs> and you? I would like to donate some of it to the Arthritic and uh, Rheumatism Foundation and uh, the girls. My daughter's got a little thing going for them. They want some formals and some clothes, and I think I'd like to buy a whole tank of gasoline for my car, all for myself. <laughs> you can, then you're going to drink it? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, and thanks for being Thank with you us. Thank you very much.
Remember, when you buy our sponsor's product, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night. <laughs> The Groucho Show has been brought to you by Tony, makers of Silver Curve, the only permanent custom made to give gray hair the special beauty care it needs. The Tony Company also brings you the Loretta Young Show every Sunday night over most of these same stations.